Hello, gentles and ladymen. I'm Ulan Gaming, and I'm making this video targeted towards newer players, or players who are on the lower end of the skill spectrum, and are looking to improve their fundamentals and core understanding of the game. In this video, we will be going over the mindset you need to bring into games, the concept of timings and tempos, the basics of constructing a good deck, and what to do in Age 1. We will not be going over micro or hotkeys, I'll save those for another video. Uh, if you are an experienced player and you already know all the stuff I'm going to go into in this video, I beg of you to send this video to the newer players you come across. They can start learning the game. It's a tough game to get into, and we've, we've all been there at one point. And the more people we can include to make learning the, to make learning easy, the better. But for this video, I do wish to keep the focus on age one, as in most cases, 90% of the uh, the newer players that I see, this age is the age where they lose the game. Now, the thing to understand about Age of Empires 3 is that this game is as much a race as it is a strategy game. You need to move quickly, which brings us to the first mistake most new people make, waiting to train your first villager. Ideally, you should be collecting your food crates while spamming the villager button on your town center. If you're training settlers in the first 6 to 9 seconds of the game, you're doing well. Anything slower than 10 seconds is slow. And yet, I occasionally see newer players waiting as long as 30 seconds or even a minute to start training one. But here's the thing. The faster you get your first villager out, the faster they can collect resources for you, meaning the more resources you get over the course of the game. It also means you get to train your second villager faster, repeating the cycle. If your opponent makes his first villager 20 seconds before you, his entire economy is going to be 20 seconds ahead of yours for the rest of the game. Which doesn't sound like much, but it can be absolutely critical. To any newer players, a huge tip that will help you through all the entire game is to go through the UI settings and turn on the game timer. This will allow you to get a full understanding of whether you're slow, fast, or anywhere in between. You'll get an understanding of how good you and your uh, of how much you and your opponent can do in similar time frames, and begin measuring the game in time. Uh, just this one simple adjustment will help you immensely. On the note of training villagers quickly, tip two is to never have your own town center be doing nothing. This is called an idle TC, and it's something you should avoid or aim to minimize as much as possible. You should be aiming to make new settlers at all times to boost your economy, and keep doing this right up until you've maxed out your settlers, and the game won't let you make any more. And if you aren't training villagers or settlers, then you should be aging up to the next stage. While I said I wasn't going to talk about hotkeys, I will make an exception for this. One of the easiest ways you can improve your gameplay and learn to make settlers more is to set up a hotkey for your town center and memorize the hotkey for making a villager. For me, I use T for town center and Q for villager because it aligns right where my fingers rest on the keyboard. I've gotten to the point where I don't even need to think about it and my muscle memory takes over and trains more of settlers just by hitting T and then Q a couple of times. I barely notice it's happening and switch my focus right back to whatever I was doing. Simply having more settlers, or you know, villagers, or villies, as I like to call them, will boost your economy a great deal. And this is and this skill to always be making more settlers is a core fundamental aspect of that. On that note, the, uh, the civilization Ottomans train villagers automatically without you having to click or press anything, as long as there's population space. I highly recommend avoiding playing the Ottomans until you are more experienced at the game, as playing them will stunt your growth as a player, as you will never attain that settler muscle uh, that that settler making muscle memory. Tip three is a big one: avoid making mills or farms, point blank and period. The problem with farms and mills is that they collect much, much slower than natural resources. This applies to estates as well when compared to coin mines. Natural resources, especially when combined with the gather rate increasing techs available at the market, can easily be gathered over twice as fast as mills eventually, meaning 10 villagers on deer are capable of gathering food faster than 20 villagers on a farm. And unlike a farm, mill, or estate, you don't need to spend 400 to 600 wood on it. This is a huge weakness I see among new players, as they'll make farms as early as possible and stay in their base forever. In reality, the goal should be to exhaust as many hunts as you safely can from the map before you even think about making mills. If a hunt is dangerous, make it less dangerous by building a barracks or an outpost there to protect your villagers. An outpost is still cheaper and faster than a mill, always remember that. 
This is the biggest reason map control is important. If you take the map and punish your opponent for leaving it, forcing them to stay inside their base, you're forcing them to switch to mills because they can't reach the far-off hunts. Meanwhile, your settlers are free to roam the entire map in relative safety and take all the natural resources from the map, which is cheaper, faster, and more effective than, states and than estates and mills. This is why building a forward base is so popular in the game, and why turtling is tricky and tough. It's also worth noting that while we are here that food is the fastest gathering resource and wood is the slowest. Additionally, berry bushes collect at the same rate as mills, so remember to exhaust any berry bushes in your base as well before spending the wood to make a mill. While berry bushes should generally be avoided, they can still provide an okay food source if you're under pressure from your opponent and can't easily leave your base. Next thing we will go over is the basics of deck building. Too often, I will find newer or less experienced players with decks that look like this. This is not a good deck, but to a newer player, it might seem like an excellent deck, as it's full of upgrades and units and gather rates. They think to themselves that with these cards, they can buff how fast they gather from mills and estates and have excellent economy with powerful upgraded units behind it. However, a deck like this is sure to get you killed. The number, one most issue, the number one issue with most players' decks is that they put too many cards in Age 1. Cards in later ages get progressively more valuable. Age 1 cards are generally valued at around 300 resources, Age 2 shipments are worth 700, Age 3 are generally worth around 1000, and Age 4 are worth around 1600. Uh, your deck should have the most shipments in the age where you will spend the most time in the game. Your age 1 should only contain cards that you will actually be send and be minimized as much as possible to save more cards for ages 2 and 3. Age 4 should also be kept relatively late, as shipments come in slower by the time you get there and you won't always be able to send all your cards in age 4 anyways. However, one thing to do for sure is... Uh, so you want most of your shipments to be in ages 2 and 3 because that's where a majority of the game will take place. Um, it is worth noting that any civilization that has any of the factory shipments should put those in H4. Uh, they should take up most, if not all, of your shipments in H4. Maybe about half of them at, at the least. Uh, but if you can put two factories in your deck, put two factories in your deck. They are key. Uh, but the second big thing that like I, I see in a lot of... Um, newer players' decks is that they don't have unit shipments or crate shipments. And then other players have only unit shipments and crate shipments. Now, between the two of these, only having units and crates is better than having none at all and having nothing but upgrades. But you really do need a mix of everything. Uh, you need you, you need small unit shipments to to push uh, to to boost your military and or protect you if you're being pushed. You need upgrades to help boom and make your army of higher quality. You need two falconets so that you can start pushing at your timing in age three. Uh, you, you need everything. You need a, a couple crates, you need a couple unit shipments, and you need a couple upgrades. It can't have just upgrades or eco cards and just unit shipments. It doesn't work. Uh, so you need more balance in your decks. Uh, and this is an example of a much better deck. You can see we only have two shipments in age two, and we have four in age four, and then the, a majority of the shipments are for ages two and three. Uh, this is for British, the same civilization as the the, the previous picture that had the, uh, the the picture of a bad deck that I that I made. Now, which deck? Now, which card do you send first? The answer is actually an extremely simple one. Most civilizations have a three settler card in age one. This should be your first shipment for 90% of civs in 95% of games. I see players occasionally bring the infinite 2 villager card that some civs have. Do not do this. An infinite card needs to be good enough that you want to send it again, and in 2 villagers case, by the time your second card comes in, you should be in age 2, or almost there, and then you can instead send 5 bills after your initial 3. Uh, in this case, over two shipments, you'd get eight villagers, whereas shipping the infinite two twice would only have gotten you four in the same time frame. Most infinite shipments you'll see skilled players use, uh, they'll put in their decks for like age four, or very, very late age three. 
Now, what do you do if your civilization doesn't have three villagers? Your first shipment needs to be eco-based in order to keep up with everybody else. But in general, try to avoid things like furrier or exotic hardwoods as first shipments. In fact, I wouldn't even recommend putting them in your deck most of the time unless you're playing Treaty. For India, your first shipment will usually be distributivism. The same goes for Russia. Uh, for Italy, it'll probably be capitalism uh, you'll want to send first. Portugal is one of the ones with the most variety. As you may see, Portugal players start with economic theory, schooners, or advanced trading posts, depending on what kind of economy they're aiming for. Uh, Japan's first card will usually be Heavenly Kami for a buff to Shrine Generation. Uh, the biggest theme is that your first card should be economic. Uh, the last and biggest thing I will go over is what to do in Age 1. The simple answer is that you do not want to be in Age 1. At all. Everything you do in Age 1 should serve to get you to Age 2 faster and with an acceptable economy. Ideally, you want to be clicking this button to Age Up to 2 within 2 minutes and 45 seconds to 3 minutes and 30 seconds of starting the game. 2.45 is really fast, and 3.30 is slowish but acceptable. These are not ironclad rules, as some civs are just faster than others, but as a general rule, it's what you should aim for. Now, I know a couple of you heard me say those times and went pale as a kite, so I'll explain how to Age 1. In this time, in three-ish minutes, we can train five to six bills and ship three of them, resulting in most civs having somewhere between 14 to 16 villagers on age up upon clicking. Obviously, there's some exceptions, but again, as a general rule, this is what you want to aim for, is the 14 to 16 population in villagers. Uh, some civs like to age up super fast for uber rushes and age with only around 10 bills, but that's a topic for another video and I'd recommend just avoiding that until you get the muscle memory to constantly make villagers. For most civs, an age one with the objective of attaining this kind of time and numbers will involve collecting all your crates, queuing your villagers, and setting everyone to food. That's it. You'll often build a house and maybe chop some wood to either get a trade post or a market to get hunting dogs, but once these secondary objective are, uh, objectives are attained, it's everyone to food. No stragglers mining or chopping. Uh, just everyone to food. Continue queuing bills, send your first shipment, be it villagers or whatever, and age up as soon as you can safely do it without going idle or with only a couple seconds of idle time. That's it. That's what your age one should look like 90% of the time. Collect your crates, queue your bills, send everyone to food, build a house, and you're good. Learning how to do this will give you a much better starting economy, and it's mostly universal for whatever civ you're playing. The kind of sole exception to this is Italy, as their age 1 is kind of weird and quirky, but once again, topic for another day. The reason it's important to get to the next stage is because the sooner you get to age 2, the sooner you can make military, which means the sooner you can attack your opponent or defend yourself if your opponent is attacking you. It also means the sooner you get to age it also means the sooner you get to age 2, the sooner you get to age 3, and can start making cannons. And it goes on and on and on and on. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, Age of Empires is as much a race as it is a strategy game. As, example, as an example, if India is doing a fast age up and starts aging with an Agra fort at 2 minutes and 15 seconds with their super fast rush strat, and you are slow and age up at even 4 minutes, they arrive in age 2 before you click up for age 1. The Agra sends to Sepoy as an age up bonus, and then the India player ships 5 from the town center and trains 5 from the Agra fort, and within 45 seconds of being in the second age, at only 4 minutes and 30 seconds, he's marching 12 Sepoy towards your base to kill your villagers and burn your houses and town centers down. You won't be able to- you won't be in age 2 and able to defend yourself for an entire minute. This is how people lose games. By aging earlier with 15 to 16 vils, or maybe 14 if you think you're going to be hardcore rush like that, you have the resources to defend yourself and you're able to get to that point faster. That's why age up times are important. Thank you so much for watching, and again, veteran players, I implore you, show this video to your friend who's struggling. Show it to the noob who you just stomped in a casual game. Show it to your little brother who's been watching you play over your shoulder and wants to give it a try. By learning these core skills, we can inch closer to a version of Age of Empires where there are no noobs and everyone is joyously engaged in co jolly cooperation and gladiatorial slapfests. Thank you very much.
thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. This was, as ever, a ton of fun to make. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, uh, please do consider subscribing. It really helps the channel out. And have a great day.